What I'd like to do on this model is to illustrate the idea of the K factor a little bit more for bending sheet metal. So what I've done here is just built this bar out of brass. Then what I've done is added a sketch to one face where I have these lines. Uh, I just converted an entity on one, one of the edges and then spaced out the lines every 0.2 of an inch and then done a split split face I've inserted a curve and done a split line so I've inserted a split line curve here and the result is each of these faces is an individual type of an entity and then flexed it I put a 90 degree bend in this the idea that I wanted to show with this is that even though these started off at 0.2 of an inch I'm going to go to my evaluate and measure I'm going to click on this entity and you can see that it is uh, stretched by 23 thousandths of an inch. It's no longer 0.2 or 200 thousandths. It's now 223. And if I come down here and grab a similar, this has compressed to 0.177. And so that's quite a bit of uh, compression and stretching going on here. And just to demonstrate where that happens, you can see this axis, this bend axis. Now what's interesting is that that does not always, the anything above this line would be stretching and anything below this line would be compressing but it's very rare actually that that line is right in the middle of your part uh, what happens a lot of times is it actually gets over here uh, everything on this edge is stretching and in this zone is compressing and it typically is around 0.3 to 0.5 of the material thickness here and so that's what they mean by a K factor is actually this ratio of where that line lives. Now if we go to the SOLIDWORKS definition of K factor, we see that it is a ratio that represents the location of what's called the neutral sheet with respect to the thickness of the sheet metal part. So here they show it pretty well. The K is the K factor, which is little t divided by big T. We have an illustration of where the plane lives with respect to the material thickness. And they also bring up the idea at this point of bend allowance, and they give the formula for bend allowance. Unfortunately, SOLIDWORKS' help menu is not terribly clear and if we go to bend allowance, this is SOLIDWORKS' definition slide for bend allowance. And it has a lot to do with the outside setback and the bend allowance in here and the inside radius and is not terribly clear. So my default at this point, I like to go to Wikipedia and look up theirs. Unfortunately, Wikipedia's definition is not all, not terribly clear either. It uh, is actually a, a bit harder to understand than SOLIDWORKS is. I did find this lovely website called sheetmetal.me and it has the K factor uh, shown here quite nicely. You can see where the uh, compression is happening. You can see where the stretching is happening. Uh, we're on a die. The reason the K factor is important is because it is related to the bend allowance.
and the bend deductions. What the bend allowance is, is let's take a look at this other slide. If you're bending, how much material do you have to account for on the stretching so that these legs end up being in the correct spot? The bend allowance, here's a nice little illustration. If you add another 0.457 in to the amount that you would get here on your legs, you have the bend allowance. And it's closely related to the bend deduction. The bend deduction works in the other direction. If you took a known good part and then unbent it into a flat pattern, uh, you need to account for your bend deduction. It's defined as the amount of material you will have to remove from the total length of your flanges in order to arrive at the flat pattern. Because if you think of it, when you flatten your piece out into a pattern, uh, you'll actually be re-shrinking these a certain amount. And those amounts are very much based on your K factor of your material. The K factor is influenced by a number of variables. Uh, what type of material you have, such as copper, will bend different from aluminum, will bend different from steel. Uh, how you're bending it, are you air bending it, or is this coining, or is this bent over a, a die of some sort? What the alloy of the material is, uh, how thick is the material, is it been heat treated at all, or has it had a surface treatment to it, such as galvanizing? All of those variables influence your K-factor. This is one place where I do like the SOLIDWORKS definition of K-factor, because it points out that the K-factor is a roll-up of all the unknown air factors for a given setup, and is typically between 0.3 and 0.5. Once a shop has actually measured their stock and determined the K factor for use in their shop, to really fine tune things, you can actually go to a bend table. So we go back to our SOLIDWORKS part where we were doing the box and take a look at the sheet metal definition and edit that feature. We can actually see our bend allowance can be based on a K factor uh, calling out a particular bend allowance, calling out a particular bend deduction, or for really fine-tuning using a bend table. Now that bend table is something that each shop has to produce on their own. This is where the website, the Sheet Metal ME website, has a good uh, chart factor range chart and a bend allowance chart sheet metal bend allowance chart which is a downloadable Excel file this chart will get you close enough for most applications but if you're truly dedicated you can plug in your own values into it and use them inside uh, SolidWorks one last thing you should know about bend tables is that you can uh, find them and change them, but they're hidden deep inside SOLIDWORKS. So we go to our sheet metal and edit this feature and go to our bend allowance. We ch change this to a bend table to have a K factor bend table or a bend calculation base bend several different types of tables here. If I go to browse, I'll show you just how deep this is in here. It's on the C drive. Program files. And this is where it starts to get a little interesting because SOLIDWORKS, inside program files has SOLIDWORKS, then SOLIDWORKS Corp, and then SOLIDWORKS inside SOLIDWORKS Corp. And that's the one you want. Don't want this first one that just says SOLIDWORKS. 
we want SolidWorks Corporation, SolidWorks, Lang, English, and sheet metal bin tables. And that's where your bin tables will be located. There's bin allowance, bin deduction, and several more. Now, if you're wondering what's the easiest way to get to these, we'll just tell it OK and we'll click on this. Oops. There. And all of a sudden it flashes a table on the screen and then flashes back to your part. And you may have said, well, what was that? Uh, Let's see that again. If I change this spin table, flashes a different table at me and back to my part. And again, you could go in and try to find those. Um, the simplest way to find it though is to go to Excel and inside Excel go to your file settings and go to recent and recent will actually have these tables will appear in your recent documents and you don't have to have memorized the file path for them which is quite a ways deep inside your computer I'd also like to show inside sheet metal, if you go to the edit the feature, there's the below the K factor, there's the area for auto relief. Auto relief shows three different options. And the thing you have to be careful of is that auto relief uh, lives in two different places. For instance, uh, if we change this one, uh, it won't actually change our drawing. Uh, let me just demonstrate here unsuppress my flat pattern what we're looking at is down here in the corners if you fold this up just as is with a straight tear feature uh, you may get some puckering of your metal in the corners and so that's not necessarily a good thing now we get into sheet metal and change the edit the feature to a rectangular corner relief nothing has happened out here and that's because we need to also uh, we started with a box and converted it down into uh, sheet metal so this convert solid we also need to change it down here at the bottom auto relief we need to change it to rectangular also and so when we do it gives us this effect for rectangular and let's change it to old brown old brun that gives us this nice carved out effect here And that should take care of any uh, puckering of metal that you have in the corners if your corners aren't looking pretty nice. Just remember that it does exist in two different places. Notice in sheet metal, uh, sheet metal still made no, no change to this. It would if we had started off with a uh, base flange and tab but because we did the uh, box and converted it see we started off with this shape and then converted it into the sheet metal so you have to change the definition inside the conversion in order for the changes to take effect <laughs> 